What do you think, bud? Runs on Tuesdays, gym on Wednesdays? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Hey guys, Nick here. Welcome back to the channel, talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. A little bit of a different one. You can see I just chugged Ollie back on the floor. Uh, he's getting a little bit restless, just helping me out with a little bit of programming for myself over the next little while. Uh, if you're checking out my Instagram, I'm doing a bit of a 1K uh, time trial challenge at the moment, so trying to get my time down to sub three minutes for the 1K. So just doing some programming for that, and I just had a little dude helping me out. But today's video is a little bit of a special one. So we've hit. Uh, 50 videos, this is 50 uploads to the YouTube channel and it's been great to see the growth of the channel over the last five to six months, all the way up to 2,000 followers uh, or subscribers uh, right from zero. So welcome to the channel if you're watching for the first time and, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing down below. Definitely helps support the channel and really it has helped grow the channel significantly over the last five, six months. I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes from there. Today's gonna be a little bit different, just wanted to do a little bit of a, a change up to what we normally talk about and for a lot of the people who are watching on here who have joined halfway through or in recent times have subscribed. I know that the growth has been quite quick over the last little while. I just wanted to give you a bit of an insight into who I am and a bit of my background before we go any further and I think it's a perfect opportunity to do that. You all right there, bud? Hey, Ollie. He's gonna sit on the floor. He's gonna sit there. Do you want me, do you want me to let you out? There you go. Bye. All right, so now that we've got all the distractions out of the way, basically this video is going to be uh, all about my background. So I'm gonna start from right at the beginning and, and really it all started with a really a strong passion for sport. And, and as you can tell, I, I wouldn't be making sports content or sports performance content if I didn't have a, have a love for sport itself. And um, as I, I know a few of you have commented, the, a large number, a percentage of my audience is from the US and Canada combined. And a lot of you have commented on the, uh, the hockey jerseys or the Michigan hoodie that I'm wearing at the moment and, and being like, this is a bit weird from an Australian guy talking about uh, or wearing American type sports or Canadian sports, etc., and and really, I'm just a sports nut at the at the heart of it, and that's really, I guess, hopefully, it comes through on the channel. But that's really where my passion begins. Is is just I love watching sport, I love being involved in sport, and that drove me into a career in sports performance and sports science. So where did it really begin? It began after high school, got into a bachelor's degree of exercise and sports science uh, here in Melbourne, and did three years of study in a very theoretical way. And I, I really enjoyed the experience of, of going to uni and doing something different. Um, but doing doing the theoretical part isn't isn't quite enough. And I'm very hands-on person anyway. So in terms of going out into the field and getting that practical experience was something I was really looking forward to towards the back end of my degree. And that's where uh, something like Michigan comes in and, and why I wear a Michigan hoodie in a lot of my videos. You might see me wearing a Michigan cap, uh, a t-shirt, etc. Is because I was fortunate enough to be able to volunteer and intern uh, in the strength conditioning department of Olympic sports in 2016 at the University of Michigan. Threw out a whole bunch of emails to a, to a whole bunch of places, just looking for experience. Wanted to travel a little bit and and wanted to try something new and really push myself um, in terms of applying some theoretical knowledge, learning from from other people. Uh, and I, I hold those relationships, per, particularly with some of the coaches there, quite uh, quite fondly because they really helped grow uh, me as a person, but also uh, in my career as well and really were the f one of the first people to give me a, a significant opportunity in the industry. And, and it's a big thing to do to, to open your doors to someone from the other side of the world. So I really appreciate that experience, but learn a hell of a lot to then bring back here to, to get involved in my second internship, which was with Melbourne Vic Centre Swimming Club and with elite developing uh, swimmers there. And if you're familiar with Matt Horton, who's won Olympic gold before, uh, he's a Vic Centre swimmer uh, at his core. Being able to do some work with some developing swimmers, really just transition what I'd learned in theory in the classroom, plus the practical experience of what I learned in the States and, and just the life experience of what I learned traveling uh, overseas by myself and, and trying to fend for myself and, and understand what it's like being day to day in a, in a profession that I wanted, I was aiming to get into. Um, and then bringing that to the, the local environment, what is happening in my own backyard and the, the athletes in and around uh, where I am and how can I improve their performance and, and grow and continue to build those practical still skills to get me into a position where I am now, where I'm, I'm fortunate enough to work in the private sector. So through these lockdowns, I've been okay. I've been able to keep working, which has been great. 
and and moved into the the more I guess sports science sports performance role that that is a bit more suited directly to me and and that's with Mets Performance and I'll link uh, our pages down below so make sure you go follow Mets Performance on social media and, and YouTube and Instagram the whole works we have a podcast that we're, I've been doing a lot of work on uh, recently but. We do a lot of athlete testing. We primarily work with endurance athletes, so cyclists, runners, triathletes are the main ones, doing VO2 max, lactate analysis. So you would have heard me talk about in previous videos and I guess why I'm so um, interested and knowledgeable about those areas is because I do it day to day. And that's that's what I, uh, I guess allude to in a lot of my videos is talking about VO2 max testing and the data and, and understanding athletes' uh, performance from a physiological perspective is, is what I do for a job now in the private sector, working right from amateur to elite athletes. So really that's a very short, I guess, less than five minute summary of, of where did I start from as soon as I left high school to now in terms of career and, and things that I do. But some of the other things I wanted to touch on and, and something I don't talk about enough, and I think it's probably a, a little bit of a um, an internal thing for me that I, I don't feel like I need to or want to talk about too much, but I think it's something I should share because it's definitely worthwhile and I think we can we can learn from it and I can definitely learn from it, but just talking about it as well. And I think the best way to, to learn something or reinforce your understanding is to teach and, and, and to try and impart that knowledge on someone else. Because if you can break it down and make it simple to then pass on to someone else, it, it really shows that you you completely understand it. And what, what I'm talking about here is I'm involved as a, as a field umpire throughout um, the Australian rules football system and, and currently listed in the, the VFL. So for those of you overseas who don't know what I'm talking about, particularly the American the American viewers, the best way I can describe it to you is we have the Australian Football League, so AFL is at the top level, uh, and then the VFL is the next one down. So it's kind of like the, the level of like college, college athletes over there. So I, I'm lucky enough to officiate in that and be one of the central umpires for making all the decisions. Uh, we have the, the interesting skill, and I, I might put up a, a quick clip of me bouncing the ball. Um, it, we start the game by bouncing this this football-like uh, shape, this oval-shaped ball in, in the air. It's, it's quite difficult. But then also, from an from a athlete perspective, we're not just sort of standing still making decisions. Uh, I can put up some stats from GPS from, from my games previously where I've done up to sort of 14 to 16 kilometers in a game, so that's quite a lot of running involved. Over two and a half Ks, two Ks of high intensity running, so there's a lot of effort in there. Um, my top speed, I think, on that GPS unit that I've got uh, clocked out about 34, 35 kilometers an hour. Uh, I'll have to go through and find it and I'll put it up uh, to see as well. So including change of direction in, in some of that mixed in, but then also the decision-making ability is, is really a, a unique, I guess, athletic um, performance in that we're trying to be just as just as good as the the players out on the ground we don't get to interchange we don't get to go onto the bench and, and have a rest we have to be there there the entire time but also we have to make really high quality decisions for the betterment of the game and so i guess understanding from that perspective as my own uh, in my own way as an athlete and coming through a development system and knowing what it's like to get to the next level and, and work at an elite or a sub elite level and, and perform has really helped my understanding in terms of applying that to athletes in other areas a couple of things that i, I want to sort of get into in the future on this channel and things things to look forward to of course i'm going to keep answering questions as best I can so leave them in the comments a lot of the questions that you guys have left have led to future videos so really happy to create some specific contents directly in a result of your questions or in response to your questions um, I will stay away from the nutrition side of things a little bit because that's something that is a little bit out of my scope of practice. I'd rather leave that for a nutrition or a dietitian. But if it's about performance, training, recovery, fatigue, um, strength, conditioning, anything like that, decision-making, psychology, performance, anything like that, um, absolutely leave it in the comments below because I'm happy to create a video specific to your scenario. We are going to try and get into some live content soon. Looking forward to, to bringing that to you guys, having some uh, discussion with you as we go through the through the topic or, or talk about different things, get some people on um, to, to do a bit of a, a Q&A, things like that. Um, but a couple of the topics that I'm going to head into and do some videos on in the future are really around my interests. And I think in anything, if you're interested in something, give me more passion about it, you're going to be more excited to make it. I think that's something that's going to help keep me motivated to keep this content going and keep growing the channel is, is just make things that I'm interested in. Because if I'm interested, I'm learning. You guys are hopefully learning from it as well. Everyone's winning out of it. I think that's the best result for all of us. So a couple of those key topics um, that I have talked a little bit about already are, are testing. Obviously, I do that day to day uh, when I'm able to be in the work uh, or in the working environment or in the office, um, being able to test athletes and understand where is our baseline, but then how can we break that that, li that limitation or that ceiling that we've put ourselves um, put for ourselves because we've got this data now? How can we break through and get to a new level of performance? Psychology is a big one that I'm really um, continuing to get involved in. Like I said, decision making in terms of what I do as an athlete in terms of umpiring is obviously critical. But athletes, endurance athletes, runners, cyclists, etc., you have to make decisions during your sport as well. Team sport athletes, you have to make decisions. And the fitter and uh, more adapt we are to make sound decisions and, and, and process all the information correctly, the better outcome we're going to get. And it's something that I've learned along the way and I'm still learning. But 
particularly for things like if you think about Ironman triathlon, you're out there, you're under heavy fatigue, you've been out there for a long period of time. But if you make a poor decision in terms of, oh, I'm going to stick with the athlete in front of me and you blow yourself up or you don't take on nutrition because you're not feeling great and you're like, oh, no, I'll just get through the next one and that causes you to, to have a bad race. These are some of the decisions that are, that are critical to our performance, but we sometimes take for granted. So I want to start talking a little bit about the psychology of performance and particularly how it applies to endurance athletes. And then from an endurance training perspective, my I guess my my key passion is is developing athletes who can outrun, outperform, and and uh, I guess outplay their opponents is something that's always stuck in my mind as a bit of a mentality or a mindset is how can I get this athlete better at outperforming and outplaying or outrunning um, their, their opponents or their competitors because at the end of the day that's going to win us a race or, or, or get us over the line in terms of a game uh, make the, the game breaking play etc so they're really the three key focus areas I'm going to start building some content around but like I said please leave your comments and questions down below because they are always really helpful in terms of coming up with some new ideas talking through and, and if anything it's going to someone out there is probably going to have a similar question to what you want to ask anyway so if you you ask it it's going to help 5, 10, 15 other people it may help heaps uh, I know I had the question about uh, how does VO2 max work on your gum watch ages ago chuck that video up and, and I think as of today it's at about 110,000 views so that's completely uh, changed the way this channel has looked, but also it's helped so many people understand what that metric is doing. So again, keep the, the questions coming. Looking forward to keeping the content rolling along. Um, hopefully I'm gonna have a little bit more help from my little friend, Ollie, uh, who was in here before. But um, thanks again for all the support. Make sure if you haven't already, please keep hitting the subscribe button, share it with your friends, share it with people you think might get something out of this channel. Five months we've grown to, to sort of 2,000 followers. Hopefully over the next uh, five or so months we can grow it even more. Really looking forward to the process and keeping the videos coming. That is it for today. Hopefully you've learned a little bit more about me. Uh, if you do want to find out any more, I do have a website, just nickjankovskis.com. I'll leave that in the description down below. You can go check out a full rundown of, uh, of who I am and my background. There's some cool resources on there, some free resources you can check out as well. Free to, free to chat about anything you like in terms of how I got into sports science. If you're an upcoming student, and you're wanting to get into the industry, what it's like, um, my background in terms of what, what I've done in Michigan or, or how to get over there, what am I doing in terms of officiating, love to chat about uh, any of that stuff and if it helps you along the way, that's an absolute bonus. As I said, please hit the subscribe button down below if you're enjoying the content. That is it for today and we'll see you in the next one.